I'm going to begin. So thank, thank you all, everybody, for uh, coming to our seminar series uh, this morning in Pakistan, this evening in North America. And uh, this is the uh, ongoing Shawalik uh, seminar series. We're now uh, in week 16 or 17, I believe. And uh, before I introduce this evening's speaker, uh, first I'll say myself, I'm Bob Reynolds. I'm uh, living in Denver, Colorado. And uh, it's been my great pleasure to uh, work with everybody on having this seminar come together. Uh, next week, we have Turi Serling from the University of Utah. And Turi's going to talk about um, his work on isotopes. And it'll complement some of the work that was reported on earlier by Kay Berensmeyer and uh, Catherine Badgley and, and others. Uh, the following week, we have Shahid Iqbal, uh, who is going to be speaking to us about uh, the uh, Peshawar Basin sediments. And he's from Qadi Azam University. The week after that, we have uh, Yani Najman, or Naiman, uh, and she will probably be speaking about regional uh, structure and tectonics and deformation of the Shawaliks. And then we've got Adbay Junkar uh, in July, and then tentatively uh, Imran Khan, uh, maybe our final speaker for the series before our summer break, uh, and that'll be about the 14th of July. We're anticipating that we'll probably have a, a summer break, uh, and then we might see if we restart the seminar series in the fall. That's still a little bit under construction. This evening, uh, or this morning, it's it's my great pleasure to uh, introduce Dr. Uh, Mona Lisa, who is from the Department of Earth Sciences at, at Qadi Azam University in Islamabad. And uh, she has had a re remarkable career uh, She's won the gold medal in earth sciences from the Pakistan Academy of Sciences. And uh, she has uh, done research on seismology and seismic hazards, uh, collaborating with people from uh, both the United States, um, from Italy, from the United Kingdom, from Germany, and Italy, Iran, and other places. So a remarkable uh, achievement, uh, one of great collaboration and international uh, uh, working together. And uh, it's, uh, she's coming to us from Qadi Azam University. And uh, I think th with no other uh, comments, I'll just introduce uh, Mona Lisa. So thank you very much for joining us and we look forward to your talk. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really very grateful to all of you. And uh, good morning and assalamu alaikum uh, to everyone. Um, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, I, I could not uh, uh, put uh, name of Professor Kasim Jan in this presentation, although this uh, whole work which I'm presenting, uh, this is actually a collaborative work which I and uh, Professor Kasim Jan have, have done. And I didn't know that uh, 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 this, 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 this work uh, was presented it presented somewhere else so I just skip his name but no doubt uh, that is a great honor for me that uh, I and uh, Dr. Kasimjan have worked together and uh, we did a lot uh, related to the seismicity of uh, uh, Pakistan and uh, 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 we addressed especially Northwest Himalayan uh, fold and thrust belt which is uh, occurring uh, which is causing uh, a great source of uh, major earthquakes in Pakistan, major and moderate size of earthquakes in Pakistan. So, uh, uh, first of, uh, 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 first, I would like uh, to um, um, thank Professor Kasimjan that uh, he uh, helped me a lot uh, to understand uh, this uh, earthquake sites, and uh, we worked together, and still we are working together. And uh, um, a major part of this work uh, is a collective um, work of uh, me and Kasim Jan. So now um, we uh, know that uh, that uh, we are living uh, on a uh, on a position where three very active plates are colliding: uh, Indian, Eurasian, and Arabian plate. And at the same time, we have on the uh, southwestern part is uh, bounded by uh, German transfer boundary. So basically, uh, this in this slide, I'm trying to show um, uh, that uh, uh, Pakistan is surrounded by uh, not only three uh, convergent boundaries, but at the same time, there is another uh, major transfer uh, boundary, which is German transfer uh, boundary, and due to which uh, 
uh, we have proposed and we have uh, find out that uh, we are experiencing transformational tectonic uh, that is uh, we are having uh, the more um, active strike slip faults as compared to thrust and reverse uh, faults uh, which um, uh, I think uh, some of the geologists in Pakistan and abroad, uh, uh, they, they, they worked a lot uh, in Northwest Hamelin, uh, uh, but as a seismologist, uh, our research shows that even in Northwest Hamelin, uh, the role of transpirational tectonic is quite active. Uh, we are experiencing uh, uh, the more activation of strike slip fault as compared to uh, thrust or reverse fault, but definitely uh, there exists some blind uh, faults as well, like Indus Kohesan seismic zone and Hazara Lor seismic zone and uh, uh, Tarvila seismic zone, which are lying at a very shallow depth. And in October 2005, uh, uh, when that Kashmir earthquake occurred, uh, basically uh, our research, uh, which we did, and uh, definitely I, I must. Uh, uh, confess that um, um, uh, Corrigan State University um, uh, they helped us a lot and uh, 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 Bob Yeats and um, Andrew and uh, John um, they we all uh, worked together to understand um, the Northwest Himalayan tectonics and to understand the kinematics of Kashmir earthquake especially and uh, um, uh, the most important thing is that uh, in, in in this particular part of uh, Pakistan in, and in this part uh, particular part of uh, Himalayas is that Nanga uh, Parbat uh, syntaxes, uh, as Kasmian um, indicated in his book and in his research, is that Nanga Parbat uh, syntaxes uh, and Himalayas they are continuously uh, uplifting and uh, their rate of uplifting of uplifting is quite high and uh, it, it is rising and uh, uh, rise up uh, and uplifting of MLIs um, uh, can be observed by seismological data as well uh, because this this slide is only this has been taken from uh, one of uh, the published uh, paper of Roger Willem but uh, uh, and this is only showing the, these yellow dots, these are only showing the distribution of uh, major earthquakes whose magnitudes are larger. But uh, 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 further slides is so, will uh, indicate that uh, uh, this area uh, is highly congested by moderate size and uh, even micro uh, seismicity uh, is very high in this area. Uh, but this is a generalized uh, 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 picture which is uh, uh, correlating the uh, major earthquake and uh, the tectonic uh, tectonic plate boundaries uh, in within and are around uh, Pakistan. Um, I think uh, you uh, don't mind about my voice because <laughs> I just woke up and <laughs> uh, started my presentation. Uh, so you uh, you have to bear my voice. Uh, now uh, this this slide is showing uh, basically um, uh, once again this has been uh, taken from uh, one of the published uh, paper of Pelham and um, actually uh, um, Andrew has also shown uh, in his presentation um, uh, the distribution of uh, uh, major uh, earthquakes uh, which were considered as disaster earthquakes along the Himalayan belt and. Uh, uh, this uh, this uh, 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 continuation and this sequence and uh, the trend of uh, these major earthquakes is uh, uh, confirming the fact that uh, Himalayan ranges are quite active and uh, um, even um, in past they are causing major earthquakes. Um, Kashmir earthquake also uh, occurred on. Uh, on Himalayan ranges, and uh, uh, the uh, coming slides will show that uh, that uh, a part of uh, Northwest Himalayan uh, fold and thrust belt is quite active, and uh, we are still believing that uh, this Kashmir earthquake 
has not released uh, so much energy um, in um, recent past. Uh, we are believing that in near future, uh, there must be a disaster and there must be, uh, uh, there might be a, a major earthquake with magnitude even uh, uh, higher than eight, uh, which can occur um, in this uh, specific part of uh, uh, lies, which lies in uh, northwest. Uh, northwest of Pakistan. So uh, there are two things which are quite uh, uh, significant from this slide. Uh, one is the trend of uh, 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 major earthquakes which occur, occurred on Himalayan ranges. Um, and that is they are uh, uh, following the sequence and they are following uh, the uh, trend of Himalayan ranges uh, which show the activeness of uh, these ranges. And the second thing is the size of those earthquakes. Um, the sizes of these earthquakes are quite uh, high, uh, means uh, size means magnitude. They all earthquakes are major uh, earthquakes, uh, not uh, moderate size or minor earthquakes. They are all uh, disasters. Uh, and uh, uh, Kashmir earthquake was one of uh, those earthquakes uh, which occurred in uh, which occurred along this uh, uh, sequence. And uh, uh, we are trying to find out uh, the reoccurrence of uh, uh, Northwest uh, Himalayan Fold and Thrust Belt uh, that uh, uh, what would be the magnitude and uh, uh, when uh, can it be happen uh, using uh, probabilistic seismic hazard assessment. And in this study, uh, for the very first time uh, in Pakistan, Monte Carlo simulation have been utilized. A Monte Carlo simulation is a technique which is uh, 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 different from the conventional probabilistic seismic hazard technique, which has been adopted all over the country. And I myself have worked a lot using this conventional uh, coronal uh, probabilistic technique. But most recently, I have worked uh, together with Kasim Jan Saab and uh, uh, this technique has been introduced, and um, uh, this is uh, this this work has been uh, submitted uh, into different journals and um, under review, and soon the results will uh, be uh, open for all for all uh, all all of us. Now, once again, um, as I said earlier, that uh, uh, these two uh, pictures diagrams they are showing actually. Uh, the blockage of uh, uh, earthquake uh, stresses which are uh, um, along which are lying along the uh, Himalayan uh, boundary and Himalayan ranges and if we see uh, the uh, part which is lying in northwest Himalayan uh, then we can easily see that uh, um, that uh, there is uh, 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 Willem and uh, his co-worker also indicated uh, the occurrence of uh, future uh, probable major earthquake with a magnitude greater than eight in this area. So um, uh, actually, uh, uh, we 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 cannot um, uh, say it with 100% uh, confirmation as uh, earthquake science is, is is that sort of science, uh, which is both experimental and theoretical. Um, in this work, uh, I use both approaches, theoretical, um, which is which is based upon the computational modeling of uh, the um, uh, future probabilistic approach, that is the Monte Carlo, and uh, computational, along with computational or theoretical, uh, uh, we have done some field work in some parts of uh, uh, this area, and uh, the picture, I will show the picture, uh, which show the uh, active faults uh, in some parts of uh, the Himalayas. Um, overall, uh, the conclusion is the same uh, that uh, uh, Willem, uh, Willem indication in 2001, um, we are uh, in uh, 2021, uh, but we are uh, still uh, confessing that and uh, we are still confirming that uh, uh, blockage of uh, 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 stresses along the Himalayan ranges is uh, still in operation, and uh, that can can be 
uh, the source of major earthquake in near future. Um, this is an overview of uh, uh, seismicity along with the Himalayan range and uh, the dots, uh, blue dots, uh, they are indicating uh, the uh, uh, distribution of the earthquakes of uh, magnitude uh, which are starting from 4 and uh, 4 and above earthquake magnitudes, their distribution is plotted here and uh, this is again showing uh, the relationship and uh, the sequence and the trend of uh, Himalayan ranges and uh, the seismicity within uh, this uh, Himalayan ranges trend and uh, along and uh, in the surrounding part of uh, the area. Uh, some focal mechanism solutions have also been plotted in this uh, map and uh, as I said earlier that uh, focal mechanism solution as everybody knows uh, they indicate uh, the uh, trend and uh, uh, they indicate the source and uh, the type and the nature of uh, uh, nature of the faults which uh, which are uh, active. So in that case, uh, again we are experiencing um, strike slip faults along with the thrust and uh, reverse fault. Um, but strike slip uh, activation, strike slip faults, as you can see in the uh, upper part of the slide, there are two very prominent uh, strike slip focal mechanism solution. So uh, it is indicating uh, that uh, uh, strike slip tectonic uh, is uh, more uh, in operational as compared to thrust or reverse. Now this is uh, 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 this is an overview. Um, I'm, 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 I'm just, uh, uh, I have uh, talked uh, much about uh, the uh, plates, boundaries, and uh, Himalayan tectonic, but uh, uh, the slide uh, is showing uh, actually the earthquakes locations with magnitude uh, greater than five in Pakistan. And uh, this uh, data is covering uh, the duration of uh, 19, uh, 1900 to 2017. Um, there are a uh, few things which must be noted that uh, if we uh, look at the legend uh, which is indicating the depth of origin of the earthquake is that um, uh, majority of the earthquakes uh, which are uh, uh, labeling with the purple color, uh, they are of uh, very shallow in depth that is less than 33 kilometer. Um, this data shows uh, that we are uh, not uh, uh, only experiencing uh, higher frequency earthquakes, mean frequency of occurring of earthquakes is quite high, but at the same time, uh, we are also experiencing very shallow level uh, uh, depth earthquake uh, in that region. Uh, most of the Pakistan, you can see that not only in Northwest Timberline Fold and Thrust Belt, uh, all over the country, the situation is the same. And uh, we are uh, having the very shallow, uh, less than 33, 30, 33 kilometer earthquakes. They are more in uh, numbers. Uh, they are more, uh, uh, and not only more in number, but they are frequently occurring uh, uh, within the country, all over the country. Um, so, uh, uh, my work is uh, uh, more related to Northwest Timberline Portland Thrust but I have worked, uh, uh, I and Kasim Nassab have uh, published a paper on uh, Ziyarat Balochistan earthquake as well and uh, in Natural Hazard, which published in Natural Hazard, in which we introduced the concept of uh, duplet, uh, duplet earthquakes. Uh, and that concept has also been int introduced for the very first time in Pakistan. Uh, Duplet earthquakes um, uh, concept is uh, uh, is very common in in those areas of uh, uh, earth where 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 uh, where the active uh, tectonic um, uh, uh, where the tectonic is active not only on the surface but there are uh, number of blind faults and uh, sometime if one earthquake occur uh, then uh, soon after the similar fault uh, uh, 
a similar fault, which which is the causative fault of that earthquake. Um, uh, the second earthquake occurred, which uh, which is not uh, related to that causative fault. So this is the concept of duplet, and uh, um, in 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 surrounding region like in Iran and in India, many researchers like Mary Zayer and uh, uh, in Iran, um, Kial Professor Kial, they have introduced the uh, concept of duplet and uh, triplet, even triplet, uh, they have introduced. So, uh, Ziyarat earthquake, we believe that which occurred in uh, southwestern part uh, of Lochisan, and uh, we believe that that earthquake uh, was actually the duplet earthquake. So, this was another new concept which we introduced, and after that, uh, uh, we are now working on uh, Dilbadin earthquake. Uh, which 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 also occurred in um, Blochisan and uh, that uh, magnitude, a high magnitude earthquake uh, uh, occurred uh, in I guess in um, uh, Kashmiran. If you if you can correct me, um, that earthquake occurred in 2009, the Badin earthquake. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, this earthquake. Um, uh, was uh, of magnitude uh, uh, 7.1 uh, in moment magnitude, uh, which is quite high in uh, magnitude. But uh, but uh, the devastation caused by this earthquake was quite low due to less population in that area. But again, uh, uh, the occurrence of such a large uh, magnitude earthquake is is indicative uh, the active. Uh, uh, tectonic nature, uh, not only in Northwest Himalayan Fold and Thrust Belt, but also uh, in uh, Suleiman Kirthar Fold and Thrust Belt, um, and even in uh, offshore area uh, near Karachi, where K Karachi is situated. Uh, even here, we uh, we are uh, uh, we are uh, um, experimenting. I can say that experimenting because. Uh, uh, near offshore, there are less seismic stations, so there is uh, a lacking of data as compared to other part of uh, Pakistan. So uh, we are uh, experimenting um, uh, this uh, Monte Carlo, uh, Monte Carlo simulation uh, technique in that area too. Um, so uh, this is uh, this is uh, the fault map, active fault map, which uh, we prepared um, um, on the basis of uh, field data and seismological uh, earthquake data distribution, and uh, along with uh, the focal mechanism solutions. So correlation of all these three parameters, we just indicated uh, the active faults uh, and. Uh, uh, we declared that there are uh, 45 active faults in Northwest Himalayan Fold and Thrust Belt. Um, um, I think uh, uh, the uh, declaration of uh, faults to active uh, to active faults uh, is just based upon the seismicity data, second uh, focal mechanism solution, and some field studies. But definitely, Andrew and his team uh, they have done a lot. Uh, uh, related to um, uh, related to the geological field work, especially in Kalabagh uh, Kalabagh area. Uh, so um, um, we have incorporated uh, uh, his uh, work, his and his team's work as well. Uh, uh, but there is uh, there is uh, one thing is lacking uh, in declaration of active faults is that uh, we do not have any valuable seismological observation in uh, Pakistan. Pakistan is lacking in value seismological studies um, uh, for which, uh, uh, as Andrew said in his uh, presentation, uh, that uh, we have submitted various projects and uh, then try to uh, uh, try to cover all these aspects which are related to active tectonic and new tectonic of uh, the Pakistan, but unfortunately we could not get any funding. Uh, so uh, uh, paleo seismology, which is which is a very important uh, 
part of uh, the seismological work especially in those areas where tectonic is very active like in hemaline uh, ridges um, we need to do the paleo seismological work so in this slide only um, uh, those faults are indicated uh, which are which are which 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 are showing activity on the basis of uh, recent seismicity recent art, recent earthquakes and fault plane solutions or focal mechanism solutions now uh, this is this this earthquake occurred in uh, tajikistan although but uh, in um, in feb 2021 but i i, I just put this slide uh, just to show that pakistan not only is experiencing uh, with those earthquakes whose epicenters are actually lying within uh, the pakistan but pakistan is also experiencing felt earthquakes uh, felt earthquakes are those earthquakes whose epicenters are not lying uh, within the within, within that particular location but they are shaking and they are uh, uh, they can shake uh, the large area surrounding area so this earthquake uh, i have just uh, put this slide just to show uh, uh, the felt earthquake which occurred in tajikistan um, but uh, in pakistan especially uh, even uh, islamabad um, its shaking was felt heavily felt and uh, people were were very um, uh, frightened and they just came out from houses when this earthquake occurred so uh, we uh, uh, i'm just uh, uh, pointing out that we are not only uh, have uh, the fear of uh, uh, earthquakes whose epicenters are actually lying uh, within the political boundary of pakistan but also we are having the threat of uh, felt earthquakes which are occurring in nearby regions uh, like in afghanistan and uh, in hindukush area and uh, um, in nepal and uh, in iran and uh, uh, iran and india uh, so if uh, any earthquake uh, Uh, which 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 is uh, which have the major uh, magnitude that is greater than seven or eight. If it occurs uh, in nearby region, then definitely uh, this earthquake can cause also uh, devastation in Pakistan too. So this is this slide is just an example uh, that we are we have to uh, we have to be careful and we have to study the felt earthquakes effects as well. Uh, which are occurring frequently in the surrounding part of uh, surrounding regions of uh, Pakistan. Now, this is uh, our original uh, original uh, data uh, presentation, which we compiled and uh, um, uh, published in different uh, literature as well. But this 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 uh, um, uh, this diagram um, has been updated. Um, initially a uh, uh, a catalog was developed uh, which was comprising the data uh, uh, duration of 1905 to 2007 and uh, then it was updated uh, using uh, uh, the local and international uh, 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 international agencies uh, or international uh, observatories like usgs and i uh isc and uh, ares data so we updated uh, this catalog and now uh, a new catalog is uh, formulated and this new catalog is uh, showing uh, the distribution of seismicity in this diagram now this is a, a picture of a, a sample picture of the uh, analog data which we usually obtained uh from uh, some seismometer or exometer um actually uh, the purpose of uh, showing this slide is uh, just to um, show the audience that uh, how earthquake is uh, uh, recorded on any seismometer or exometer and um, um our observations and our interpretations our work seismologist work is highly dependent upon the data accuracy Uh, uh what sort of seismological data is used is actually the base of uh, accuracy of any seismological work so we seismologists are basically highly dependent upon the um accurate source of data and uh, accurate uh, data incorporation in any work you know especially uh in um, probabilistic or statistical uh, approach if we we are uh, trying to 
um, uh, apply any probabilistic or statistical approach to find out the occurrence of major earthquakes or minor earthquakes or any sort of earthquakes in in specific area then we need to have a precise and uh, most accurate data source otherwise uh, 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 we, uh, uh, what, whatever technique we use if it is uh, not based on the accurate data uh, the technique is not uh, uh, useful it's just a labor work uh, which um, i'm sorry to say some of uh, the pakistani uh, researchers are doing uh, like this uh, they don't uh, um, look at the uh, accuracy of database uh, you just they just uh, apply the uh, technique and uh, show the result and uh, then they publish but um, i must say that uh, uh, database and accuracy of uh, database is very important so uh, this this slide is just uh, giving um, giving uh, the sample of an analog data which is uh, obtained uh, from one seismometer and uh, this this uh, and this is actually showing the analog form of northern pakistan um, um, kashmir earthquake which occurred in uh, 8 october 2005 now uh, this slide in this slide uh, we are just trying to show the uh, magnitude level uh, uh, magnitude uh, distribution of uh, earthquakes uh, in contouring form although uh, there is some debate uh, um, and uh, i have been asked by uh, several um, uh, whenever i present this slide uh, some person asked me that how is it possible that magnitude uh, is uh, presented in uh, contour form because magnitude is a constant and static number which uh, cannot be changed it it can it can it can uh, it cannot be changed it is a, a static and definite number which shows the size of an earthquake uh, but definitely uh, different uh, magnitude scale they show a slight variation in number like in ms uh, type of magnitude if if an earthquake ha uh, uh, ms uh, magnitude showing 7.1 then um, in uh, moment magnitude, uh, this earthquake can be have uh, a 7.2. Uh, so different magnitude scales shows uh, a, a similar earthquake, different uh, values. But these uh, values definitely uh, don't drastically change. Like uh, if 7.1 MS magnitude, then it cannot be a 6.2 in MW. So there, there is a smaller change or smaller difference due to different scale um, so this 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 slide is showing the distribution of uh, magnitude all over uh, the northwest hemorrhine fold and thirst belt and um, uh, it is uh, clearly indicating um, that uh, although um, as i said that database is very important and uh, we have uh, established catalog and this 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 uh, diagram is uh, uh, actually based upon this, uh, this that catalog data which we established and uh, strangely it is uh, indicating uh, the more uh, occurrence of uh, magnitude earthquakes which uh, which uh, which which uh, those earthquakes which are having magnitude less than 4.5 uh, moment magnitude however the frequency of uh, um, although the frequency of lower magnitude is quite high uh, but as we know that uh, 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 and as I indicated that uh, we are uh, having uh, a very active blind uh, uh, detachment and uh, uh, detachment zones and uh, um, especially Indus Khoisan seismic zone and Hazara Lord seismic zone and Serbil seismic zone. All these zones, uh, these these are quite active and they, they, they uh, uh, um, I, I believe that, I truly believe that due to the presence of these uh, blind zones, uh, lower magnitude earthquake frequency is quite high. Uh, and uh, this is this is uh, one interpretation um, uh, based upon the catalog which we established. Now this uh, slide is uh, showing the correlation of uh, focal mechanism solution which we um, uh, selected for some of uh, the earthquakes uh, uh, catalog uh, is uh, comprising of more than 5000 earthquakes uh, but uh, due to some specific uh, uh, reasons that 
non availability of specific parameters which are necessary for carrying out fault based solutions uh, we just uh, plotted uh, and we just uh, formulated some 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 of uh, the available parameters uh, focal mechanism solutions and as you can see that um, there are three observations uh, which we uh, made uh, by compiling fault plane solutions of some of uh, uh, the available uh, earthquake uh, parameter data. Uh, one is that um, uh, we have north, north, west, south, south, west, left lateral strike slip faults. Uh, they are more active, but they are having a uh, steep dip. Uh, this is one observation uh, which is uh, based upon the fault plane solution and that left lateral strike slip fault um, in north northwest direction uh, they are causing um, uh, they, they are more in number um, then uh, northwest south is and north north east southwest trend with uh, steep to shallow dipping thrust reverse faults um, they are causing some of the earthquakes and uh, uh, but uh, the result is the same that we believe that transversional tectonic is uh, more in the area as compared to uh, uh, thrusting or uh, uh, transpersonal or uh, tectonic. Um, we we, uh, we uh, can see that there are uh, uh, these red colors, they are indicating actually red color lines, they are indicating uh, the strike slip faults uh, which are present in the area. Um, like uh, here we uh, in Nanga Parbat, we are uh, um, uh, near, um, we are having Thakur fault, and here in Kashmir, Hazar Kashmir and Texas, we are having Jhelum fault, which is a major strike slip fault as declared by uh, Mirza Shahid Beksab uh, from AGK. Uh, they have worked a lot, and uh, then again, there is another fault uh, which uh, Bob uh, Ahmed Hussain and I have uh, published together, and uh, that is the Balakot Bar fault. Um, uh, uh, Punjab University uh, named it Muzaffarabad fault, um, and uh, uh, these the, these faults are actually um, the thrust fault, uh, Muzaffarabad or Balakot Bar, Bar fault, which was actually the source or the cause of. Uh, or the surface impression of interscoistal seismic zone as we declared it our research, published research. But at the same time, uh, we also observed that uh, this wall uh, is carrying the strike slip component, uh, which is um, uh, left lateral strike slip component. And on surface, we are, we are having a left lateral uh, jail of fault. So uh, we need to correlate, uh, we need to have uh, some more observation or we need to have uh, some more data uh, in order to correlate or in order to confirm this fact that strike slip component or strike slip uh, fault, uh, they are playing more active role. And uh, in salt range area, we have uh, a color kahar fault uh, and there are some earthquakes whose fault plane solutions they are showing they are uh, uh, exactly lying on this fault, and this fault has been uh, mapped by various workers. But uh, our research shows that this color car fault uh, is a quite active fault, uh, although salt range uh, due to presence of salt uh, uh, earthquake activity is less uh, in that specific area because the salt is uh, playing a role of uh, uh, playing damping role. But uh, at the same time. Uh, we observe that there there are a uh, large number of uh, uh, smaller magnitude earthquakes which are occurring along this Kala Kahar fault. Then comes the Kalaba fault. Kalaba fault um, once again is a strike slip fault and it is right there to strike slip fault, but it, it is uh, uh, its uh, northern portion is divisible into two to three segments uh, which various workers uh, like Andrew and some Pakistani researchers like Dr. Sajjad, they um, declared a thrust and reverse branches or thrust or reverse behavior in the northern northern part of this uh, Kalaba fault. So Kalaba fault at one time uh, is uh, right lateral strike slip fault, but it, its northern part uh, 
uh, is um, 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 it, its northern part carrying uh, thrust reverse and normal uh, normal uh, uh, normal uh, normal uh, thrusting no, normal parts also and uh, if we um, uh, go to the um, uh, Transcendence uh, ranges like in 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 uh, near uh, Marwat or uh, Bitani uh, ranges, then we see that uh, uh, in Surgar or uh, Bitani or uh, Kizor thrust, they they have also uh, carrying some uh, strike slip component, and there there is uh, one strike slip part which is a piezo part, and um, our work also show uh, the location of fault plane solutions. Uh, the locations of earthquakes, uh, these two things indicate that piezo fault, uh, which is a right lateral strike slip fault, is, is quite active. So uh, this overall uh, diagram uh, is showing uh, the behavior of uh, combination uh, of strike slip as well as uh, the uh, thrust and uh, uh, thrust and reverse tectonic. And um, and uh, once again, it is indicating that strike slip uh, faulting is also uh, very active in this specific part. Um, everybody is familiar with this picture. This is actually showing the intensity of that Kashmir, uh, Kashmir earthquake. And uh, actually, the intensity, uh, if we plot uh, intensity or if we, uh, um, um, if we uh, 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 plot uh, uh, or formulate isoseismal map, uh, which is an iso, uh, which is intensity map. Then it is simply indicate uh, the damage and uh, destruction trend, and on the basis of this damage and destruction trend, we can um, we can uh, 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 say that uh, which is the causative fault and what what is the trend of uh, that causative fault. So uh, actually, this intensity survey or intensity or isoseismal map help help us to uh, find out uh, the trend and uh, uh, the direct trend and uh, direction of uh, the causative fault. So this 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 on the right side, uh, um, this this uh, this is indicated uh, indicated by uh, some Indian uh, geologist, and on the left side. Uh, this is our work, which is showing the trend of iso isoseismal, uh, uh, isoseismal activity, and uh, which is caused by Kashmir earthquake. This slide has been um, shown by various workers, and uh, as I said earlier, that uh, um, uh, Indus Coast Sun seismic zone is quite active in uh, in in northwest Himalayan cold and thrust belt, and I must say that uh, in future. Um, Surface faults uh, uh, can be active, but uh, uh, these uh, major blind zones, interspersed sun seismic zone and Hazara load seismic zone, especially, uh, they can cause a major disaster in in this specific area. Uh, we need to find out. Uh, we need to have more data related uh, with this with these two blind zones, especially because uh, in this area. Um, Kashmir, uh, Azad Kashmir University, uh, Peshawar University, and uh, uh, Punjab University, they have worked a lot. Uh, geologists, uh, they have published uh, a lot of uh, work related to this uh, Hazara Kashmir St. Texas area. Uh, but um, none of uh, them, they have indicated uh, the active uh, characteristic uh, nature of these two blind zones. Although Bob Yates, uh, from Oregon and uh, Ahmed Hussain, they have uh, worked, and they have uh, Bob even with some Indian colleague. I, I've just uh, gone through one of his paper, which he sent to me, and uh, uh, in which he uh, just uh, correlated uh, geophysical data, uh, seismic exploration data, seismological data, and field work, uh, and on the basis of all these, uh, all these field studies, uh, geophysical data and seismological data. He and that uh, Indian worker, uh, they have indicated the uh, active characteristic nature of Indus Khoisan seismic zone and uh, uh, the role of De Colma uh, near uh, Salt Range, and uh, they believe that uh, uh, there there is going to be another uh, active deformational front 
uh, which is uh, lying uh, near, uh, which is covering the area near salt range. Uh, so that paper is very interesting and uh, I, I just uh, uh, see only that paper which is uh, indicating the active characteristic nature of uh, these two uh, blind zones, Indusquare Sun Seismic Zone and Hazar Lord Seismic Zone. Um, so, uh, once again, um, um, this slide is uh, uh, slightly different uh, uh, to some extent uh, uh, as compared to the previous slide. In this slide, uh, seismicity data is plotted and uh, the trend uh, the seismicity data that uh, trend is trying to correlate with that blind zone of intersquare sun seismic zone and as i said uh, that uh, that intersquare sun seismic zone is a very uh, uh, very uh, very broader uh, <coughs> excuse me uh, very broad and uh, very large uh, zone but at the same time it is lying at a very shallow depth uh, means 10 to 12 kilometer so uh, this uh, seismicity data uh, is actually indicating the depth of uh, that uh, blind zone and uh, this uh, uh, is uh, uh, covering the area of Tarbela uh, even and from Tarbela uh, starting from Tarbela to uh, Islamabad we are having Hazara Lord seismic zone uh, which is uh, lying parallel to that indus Khoisan seismic zone and then after Islamabad uh, in uh, Northern Portwar Deform Zone, uh, uh, from from Northern Portwar Deform Zone to Salt Range, uh, we we are having a uh, uh, triangle zone, which has been indicated by Jadun uh, in one of his work. So all these uh, zones are very active, although they are blind, but uh, they are uh, playing a very important role not only in the tectonic and uh, seismicity of the area, but uh, especially in the uh, northern Portwar deform zone. Um, um, our recent study shows that uh, injection of fluid and uh, due to industrial work, uh, geophysical surveys, they are triggering uh, the seismicity level in in Portwar region especially. Um, uh, I have just uh, submitted that paper too, um, uh, in which uh, uh, I have uh, um, correlated uh, the uh, geophysical uh, work, uh, 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 geophysical work which has been carried out, carried out in uh, Portwar area that is disturbing uh, or activating uh, the existing faults, uh, either they are blind faults or uh, flower structures or uh, whatever, whatever the kinematics and the uh, blind blind parts or the surface walls, uh, these these walls they are actually um, they they have now the increased level of seismicity as compared to uh, previous uh, uh, previously obtained uh, data. Now the seismicity is increasing. We believe that uh, due to uh, due to high uh, geophysical surveys and uh, injection of fluid, uh, well drilling. Uh, these are causing the activation of uh, some some of the faults in Portwar area. Now, um, uh, I think uh, uh, this slide can be uh, uh, can be described uh, by Kasim Jar and Andrew uh, rather than I because I'm not a geologist. But uh, actually, this is uh, showing uh, the uh, location of uh, the Palakot uh, bulb. Power fault uh, aerial view. This is uh, uh, an aerial uh, photograph, and uh, this uh, aerial diagram or aerial photograph is actually indicating the location of Balakot Bar fault, which was the cause of uh, Kashmir earthquake. Once again, <laughs> I think uh, Kasimjan can describe it very well. Um, as I said, I'm not a geologist, but this field mapping, uh, this 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 uh, area is not. Uh, the uh, Kashmir uh, area, but it is it, it, it is the area where uh, Riyasi uh, thrust is lying. And one of my MPhil uh, student, uh, he uh, did his uh, uh, MPhil uh, research on Riyasi thrust and uh, using uh, the integrated approach of geophysical data and uh, seismological data and 
geological field work so he just uh, uh, visited that area and uh, he uh, did some geological field work and he just mapped uh, uh, try to map the uh, reasi thrust uh, it must be noted that uh, the uh, mangla dam is uh, uh, located quite close to that reasi thrust and uh, we believe that reasi thrust is a very active uh, thrust and uh, which can cause uh, a major earthquake in near future uh, so um, uh, my and my fs student uh, we have just interpreted that we need to uh, have uh, some more uh, field observations and uh, correlation of uh, latest seismological data uh, like um, putting some inst uh, installing some seismometers there and uh, to get data of 2 to 3 months uh, and uh, then uh, we can correlate this uh, latest data um, uh, which is comprising of 2 uh, to 3 months uh, uh, we can correlate it with the geological field work and uh, then um, then uh, we we then confirm uh this this our interpretation which uh which my student did in his uh, mphil work um so this is another field um, study which he did and uh, this is also indicating uh, uh this is one uh, one section uh, which he uh, covered uh of uh, reasi thrust and uh, uh, which is passing near uh, mangla and uh, he just visited it and just mapped and tried to find out uh, the active characteristic of that reasi thrust another another uh, picture of geological field work now this uh, this uh, diagram is very important uh, because this this diagram is uh, showing the collective uh, seismicity uh, fault plane solution uh, active faults Uh, their nature, their trend, and uh, actually, uh, in this diagram, uh, we are trying to uh, uh, correlate all these three important parameters with each other, like uh, drawing uh, or uh, uh, plotting the earthquake data on this northwest Himalayan fold and thrust belt uh, is showing the distribution and the trend of seismicity. like uh, if we see um, uh, near uh, uh, in gagan uh, in in area which is near gagan then we are having a cluster of uh, earthquakes so uh, but if we uh, uh, go to salt range then we are having dispersed or less a number of distribution of earthquakes so uh, just uh, uh by plotting earthquake data on any map uh, it just shows the seismicity trend uh, of that specific area and uh, definitely uh, as we know that earthquake are caused by uh, faults so if there are large number of clustering uh, of earthquakes and they are following some specific trend and even though geologist or any other are scientists they have not uh, mapped any fault in that area but earthquake cluster is uh, uh, showing uh, that there is some activity so uh, we can uh, map or we can uh, trace or we can draw down uh, the faults on the basis of this uh, distribution of earthquakes so important thing is that we uh, uh, i must say that we must have the correct and uh, reliable catalog on the basis of which we can uh, interpret or we can find out uh, the unmapped fault as well so the second thing is uh, once again the fault plane solution fault plane solution is a technique which is a very useful technique and unfortunately in pakistan this technique has not been utilized by uh, most of uh, the workers and uh, they do some work uh, uh, they did uh, they, they did some work related to geology and uh, but for the solution only we have carried out and uh, uh, we uh, we need to have more for plane solutions because for plane solution is the only technique uh, which uh, on the basis of which we find out not only 
uh, the uh, causative fault nature the, uh, that is what uh, kind of fault is it either it is strike slip or thrust or reverse but we can also find out uh, the trend of uh, uh, that fault that is uh, strike and dip uh, and other parameters uh, which uh, cannot be mapped geologically so if uh, uh, due to um, as we know that uh, due to um, uh, this uh, uh, covered and uh, uh, then uh, uh, due to some strategic reasons and uh, in some uh, areas uh, field work uh, geologists cannot do some field work so in that case if we have fault print solution data and we have fault print solutions then we can easily map uh, the blind faults and uh, show the act, uh, active characteristic nature of uh, surface faults as well so this is this this is a very good tool uh, and uh, this is a very important tool which we can use uh, in, 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 in an area, especially uh, Pakistan, where um, uh, due to political constraints, uh, field work uh, is not permitted. Uh, but if we have uh, the earthquake data and we have formulated the fault print solution, then we can indicate uh, or map the, pad, map the uh, active fault there. Once again, um, another uh, closer view of uh, uh, the area near Islamabad. Islamabad being the capital of Pakistan. Um, uh, Islamabad is capital of Pakistan, but unfortunately, uh, Islamabad is lying on a very active uh, tectonic uh, domain, and uh, there are a number of active faults uh, which are passing uh, 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 very closely to Islamabad. And, uh, MPT and MPT plays like Magla Thrust, Thandiyani Thrust, Nathiagari uh, Thrust, they all are uh, causing, they, they, are, they all can cause uh, a severe damage uh, to Islamabad. Uh, most recently, um, we have established uh, our um, um, Maya and Kasimjan, um, uh, one of a uh, project uh, which, which, which was uh, funded by HEC. And uh, uh, through this project, uh, um, I have established a lab in uh, Kaidiyazam University. And uh, this lab, uh, the main aim of this, uh, this lab is comprising of both uh, accelerometers and seismometers. And uh, this is the first lab in Pakistan uh, on university level, uh, which have uh, eight accelerometers and four seismometers. And uh, the basic aim of, uh, and they are short period uh, uh, seismometers. Uh, we uh, we are uh, not having the broadband or uh, very broadband uh, seismic stations in this lab. We have only short period, uh, um, short period, or uh, uh, they are covering the, the area of uh, Pakistan only. And uh, the purpose of establishing this lab is uh, to. Uh, prepare ourselves uh, to have a more reliable data, especially uh, for Islamabad and uh, its surrounding. And uh, uh, recently, uh, I have uh, used the data of uh, six months data of uh, this lab and uh, uh, published a paper uh, uh, in an international journal in which I have used uh, the data of uh, this, uh, uh, this lab which is indicating that Islamabad is experiencing uh, high frequency micro level of earthquakes. And uh, I did a fault print solution of those earthquakes as well. And um, I can share uh, these results of uh, uh, this publication as well with the audience uh, if they want. And they can uh, just send me an email and, the, and I can share the observations which I've made uh, which are based upon the real-time data, uh, which is obtained this recently developed lab uh, in Kadiyazm University. Um, I'm going to just uh, skip this uh, because I have already talked about much um, talked uh, much uh, about this uh, transpirational technique, and uh, this is actually showing uh, two of the major earthquakes uh, uh, which occurred uh, in Northwest Himalayan Fold and Thrust Belt and their 
their fault pin solutions, which, which I have already discussed. Now this is, um, um, in this map, uh, uh, I have just uh, tried to place all the uh, active faults on the satellite map. As I said earlier that uh, uh, with the passage of time, uh, geological field work in Pakistan is becoming difficult. Uh, so um, we have to uh, um, we have we have we have to incorporate different more more different approaches in order to find out uh, the um, uh, seismic activity and active characteristics of existing fault or even fault mapping. So in this map, I just try to place or correlate uh, the active faults which I indicated in the previous slides uh, on a satellite image. Um, uh, just to indicate that satellite uh, images, um, uh, by having satellite images, we can uh, have a better picture or more reliable results of uh, the location of active parts in specific area. So uh, this slide is only showing uh, that if we do not have uh, the access of uh, physically uh, um, uh, physical uh, geological field work, uh, then we can uh, at least have, uh, if we have uh, satellite image, then we can uh, plot uh, or uh, identify uh, uh, the uh, faults uh, in any region. Now this is, uh, uh, this is once again um, a part of uh, Kalaba fault uh, and uh, Sulgar range and uh, the correlation of uh, uh, earthquakes and their focal mechanism solution. You can see that majority of focal mechanism solution, uh, they are stride slip once again. And uh, uh, the, this, this, this is specifically uh, for the area near uh, Kalaba Fault, uh, which is indicating uh, that uh, um, right lateral uh, strike slip nature of Kalaba fault is quite in uh, tectonic in that particular area. Now this is uh, this this, this uh, has been published uh, soon after uh, the uh, occurrence of Kashmir earthquake that is in 2005. Uh, when Kashmir earthquake occurred then in 2007 I and Kasim Jansa and uh, some other researcher from NISPAC and uh, some other institutes, we then um, uh, developed this seismic tectonic zonation map of Pakistan. Um, that map then updated, and uh, using this Monte Carlo simulation approach, uh, this is a summary of uh, this approach, and anyone can uh, have this uh, uh, the uh, 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 the procedure uh, of this uh, approach from internet or from any book. Um, I just summarize uh, this approach on this slide, so I'm not going to uh, waste uh, uh, time on, on, on uh, re just reading this, uh, the procedure of Monte Carlo simulation procedure. Uh, anyone can see uh, this procedure from any book or any uh, literature or from internet. Uh, one thing uh, I just want to indicate uh, that uh, this technique is not a conventional probabilistic seismic hazard technique, uh, which is uh, being adopted in Pakistan by uh, uh, like Cornell uh, and, and McGuire and Franklin. They have adopted conventional uh, uh, formulated conventional probabilistic seismic hazard and which is which is being adopted in Pakistan. But now uh, we, we have developed uh, 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 probabilistic seismic hazard map of Pakistan using this Monte Carlo simulation technique. Once again, the procedure. Uh, on the basis of uh, on the basis of this, uh, sorry. On the basis of Monte Carlo simulation, uh, we have updated. Uh, uh, the uh, seismotectonic uh, zonation uh, and seismic hazard zonation uh, of uh, uh, Northwest Himalayan Fold and Thrust Belt. And um, as you can see that, that uh, there are several different colors which are indicating uh, the different zones 
uh, uh, in which uh, now Northwest Himalayan Fold and Thrust Belt is divided. And uh, uh, this uh, this is um, uh, where H is uh, written, H is showing high hazard and uh, M is showing medium hazard while L is showing the low hazard. So this uh, diagram is showing uh, the uh, probabilistic seismic hazard assessment using Monte Carlo simulation and on the basis of which uh, the previous seismotectonic map which I have shown in the previous slide which was established in 2007 that has been updated and on the basis of uh, uh, newly adopted approach and uh, by the incorporation of uh, Kaidism University uh, laboratory uh, we we can see that uh, seismic uh, zonation this updated seismic zonation uh, they are showing that Islamabad is lying in a high hazard uh, zone um, which was uh, not declared by previous worker they uh, even uh, ourselves we 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 uh, have also declared Islamabad in a moderate zone but now this uh, latest data which is also based upon um, Kathiadam University laboratory uh, data. Uh, so this is showing that now Islamabad is lying in high hazard zone. And at the same time, if we look at the um, some part of uh, uh, salt range near Kalar Kahar, uh, even this part is lying in high hazard area. So uh, we can say that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, we have updated or upgraded uh, these informations and on the basis of this uh, MS um, MC approach and uh, MC approach uh, is very uh, useful and uh, uh, Julian Bomber from Imperial College uh, he helped me uh, in um, order to understand this approach and uh, I have uh, um, he has just uh, sent me uh, one or two of his paper uh, which he um, did using uh, MC approach, Monte Carlo approach uh, for other parts of work and uh, 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 with his uh, collaboration and with his guidance, I just tried this uh, approach for Northwest Himalayan cold and thrust belt. So this is showing uh, the uh, um, updated hazard uh, map of Northwest Himalayan cold and thrust belt. Um, then uh, this work has uh, been uh, done for uh, uh, the um, spe spe specifically for Hazara Kashmir syntaxes and uh, um, uh, since uh, there are large number of parameters are involved and uh, <laughs> I think I need uh, one full day to explain all the parameters and their procedures and the things. I'm just showing the results uh, of uh, uh, our work, which we done for uh, Northwest Himalayan Fold and Thrust Belt uh, only. And, uh, uh, but we, we, we did some work uh, in um, Southwestern part of Pakistan also. So this is uh, showing the uh, hazard zonation map based upon that approach and uh, uh, they are indicating zone 1, zone 2A, and zone 2B, and zone 3, and zone 4. And I must say that uh, in this work, uh, uh, NESPAC uh, uh, is also involved because they, uh, they, um, they, they just contacted me and hired me as a consultant uh, to, um, uh, to prepare hazard zone, uh, hazard zonation map for that particular area. So I did this work for, for them. But uh, definitely, this uh, work is also going to publish uh, uh, very soon. Um, this uh, now the, these are the results uh, of uh, our work. Um, the faults, uh, their nature, uh, their expected uh, rupture length, and different attenuation equations, uh, which uh, which has been adopted, and uh, they show. Uh, the maximum potential or maximum credible earthquake or of uh, the active faults, uh, especially near near Islamabad area. 
once again they are computed acceleration peak round accelerations we all know that probabilistic approach or deterministic approach or seismic hazard is highly based upon uh, the uh, peak round acceleration data so for these uh, uh, we have uh, uh, incorporated seven attenuation equation to find out uh, the peak round acceleration data uh, for different faults i'm showing just few of them as I said that uh, for we did this work not only for Northwest Himalayan Cold and Thrust Belt, but some part of Pakistan as well. So there is a huge, huge number of tables and data, uh, which uh, the present uh, time does not permit me to show. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going uh, to show that in this way, we, are, uh, we have presented our work in different publications. Now these are the seismic hazard curves and uh, seismic hazard uh, curves, uh, curves, these are plotted for different return periods and uh, uh, not only uh, researchers in Pakistan, they usually take um, uh, 50, um, uh, 50 years uh, return period, but uh, um, I use this software and this software, the, uh, the uh, utilization of the software helps us to find out uh, the uh, peak ground acceleration for the larger span of uh, frequency of exceedance. Means uh, we cover uh, a large, large span or large duration for the estimation of peak ground accelerations. Once again, the same map, the same map. Now, uh, this is this is representing the, um, um, I'm going to just wind up, uh, there are some few slides left. Uh, this this, this uh, one slide is uh, showing uh, uh, the part of uh, Suleiman Kether fold and thrust belt and uh, along with uh, Koita transfer zone. And uh, once again, um, uh, we plotted, a, we prepared a catalog for this uh, area and uh, we plotted uh, the uh, earthquake on uh, on this uh, on this map and uh, these earthquakes uh, uh, they are showing that uh, uh, strangely here uh, this uh, catalog is showing that there are uh, uh, major magnitude earthquake they are more in numbers as compared to uh, smaller size or moderate size earthquakes so this um, another uh, uh, forecasting or prediction or another probability of occurrence of major earthquake uh, uh, other than Northwest Himalayan Cold and Thrust Belt uh, is uh, we we uh, interpret or we we uh, we say that uh, in future a major earthquake uh, if occurs other than Northwest Himalayan Cold and Thrust Belt then it will occur in this part of Pakistan. Uh, which is uh, which is Suleiman Kirtar fold and thrust belt and Koita transfer zone. Uh, we did hazard estimation as well uh, for this part of uh, area, and uh, all those parameters and um, acceleration curves. And uh, I'm not uh, um, showing in this um, in this uh, presentation um, uh, because uh, this work is under review and it is uh, uh, submitted to some journal. Uh, when once it is published, uh, then it can be shared with uh, with uh, all the researchers. But uh, this is the result of our uh, probabilistic seismic hazard assessment using Monte Carlo simulation for uh, Suleiman and Kether fold and thrust belt and Quetta transfer zone. Now at the end, uh, we then um, try to uh, develop a new seismic hazard map of uh, Pakistan, um, which is based upon the newly developed catalog of uh, Northwest Himalayan Cold and Thrust Belt and uh, Suleiman Kirthar uh, ranges and Koita transfer zones. And we plotted it in contour form. And each contour is showing uh, the PGA value. Um, uh, PGA value uh, is uh, in uh, PGA value interval is taken as 0 0.02 and uh, we can see that in um, Islamabad uh, near Islamabad we are are having 0.38 g 
PGA value, which is uh, which is comparatively higher than the previously uh, uh, developed uh, model of uh, hazard model of Pakistan. Um, but this uh, this work is based, as I said uh, earlier, that this work is based on MC or Monte Carlo uh, simulation technique. So um, this is uh, the most updated uh, uh, hazard map of Pakistan, uh, and uh, um, this is this is uh, um, also under review, and uh, soon it will be published. And uh, this, the, but, but, but I must say that uh, this this uh, this work is once again uh, based upon the real time updated uh, authentic catalog and uh, uh, the other important thing is that we uh, have not used the conventional technique which has been adopted all over the country by various researchers and by myself um, at this time uh, we adopted a new approach and this new approach is quite useful and more authentic as compared to conventional probabilistic seismic hazard technique. At the end, um, this is a list of uh, some of our work which we did. Um, as you can see that um, uh, Kasim Jan Saab uh, helped me a lot uh, in publication and you can see that we have um, um, worked on, uh, I have worked with Zaire uh, on Nepal earthquake and uh, uh, with Kasim Jan Saab, we published uh, in different uh, journals uh, like Natural Hazards and uh, Journal of Seismology, which are leading journals of our, our field. And I must say that uh, these are those journals uh, which are uh, which are very uh, high high ranking journals in our field. Uh, in the field of seismology and as I said that we have worked on Ziarat earthquake uh, which occurred in 2008 and in which we uh, introduced for the very first time the concept of duplet. So this this uh, this work is uh, uh, very interesting and um, um, I must say that uh, uh, everyone must read it and uh, study it in order to uh, work uh, uh, on Ziarat or Blojistan area. So uh, um, this list is showing some of uh, some of the work which is uh, covering uh, not only north western Himalayan fold and thrust belt but other part of Pakistan as well. Um, so I'm I'm it and uh, I'm really very grateful to all of you for bearing me for such a long time. Thank you very much. Hey, well, uh, Mona Lisa, it, uh, this is Bob. I, I'm going to thank you for uh, your very thorough presentation and interesting to see the span of uh, research that you and your colleagues are working on. I have a, a quick question I just wanted to ask you about uh, <coughs> whether there are uh, zoning for construction uh, in, in other words, are, are there uh, re regulations being implemented in the construction and architecture industries in Pakistan uh, resulting from the knowledge that you are providing of seismic hazard? Uh, are, are there seismic requirements for the new buildings being built, for example, in Islamabad? Yeah, uh, well, uh, your question is very interesting and uh, definitely um, this is a problem which we all are facing in Pakistan. Although we are working uh, uh, since 2005 and we are uh, uh, formulating different hazard maps for different uh, areas of Pakistan, even I, we have, I and Kasim Jan Saab have recently published uh, uh, some of the work related to some parts of Pakistan. but. Unfortunately, implementation of these hazard zonation uh, work is uh, not uh, very appropriate in Pakistan. So um, I think Kasmi uh, can address it uh, more uh, appropriately uh, because we are facing this problem that uh, policymakers and uh, government officials like NDMA and other institutes 
they uh, actually there are there there are so much uh, researchers in Pakistan and there are now so much publications related to hazard. Uh, they are themselves confused which approach and which zonation they use. <laughs> so I think uh, this is one of uh, the issue which they are facing. Uh, um, and the second thing is that uh, the implementation of uh, these hazard parameters. Unfortunately, policymakers and uh, government officials uh, they they are not caring much about uh, the implementation of these these uh, the results of these donations. Kasim uh, Jansab, you may you may explain further. Well. Um... I don't know about that, but all I can say is that now they do have a building code in Pakistan. And let us hope that that they implement, they ensure that large buildings are constructed according to the building code that they have developed. And you were a member of that uh, committee. Thank you. Well, very good. I, uh I have one more question, and then um, if anybody else has questions, please uh, raise your hand or, or jump in. But I wanted to address that. You you indicated there's a, a Kashmir Himalayan seismic gap. Uh, one of your maps uh, early on indicated that there's a, a seismic gap. And is that uh, is that tied to the high risk that you're mapping in the area north, north of Jhelum, north of Mangya? Yeah, uh, as I indicated that uh, this seismic gap, which uh, which, which is uh, observed in some of our work, and in most recently one of my MPhil students, which uh, uh, which did his uh, integrated approach, like he used uh, geophysical studies, seismic data, seismological data, and field work. All these work, they are clearly indicating that uh, there there this seismic gap uh, exists. Uh, 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 in Northwest, and they can cause a severe damage uh, to uh, our strategic uh, uh, strategic uh, uh, locations, especially Tarbela and Mangla. Uh, because uh, near Tarbela, we are having Indusquare Sun Seismic Zone, and uh, uh, near uh, Mangla, we are having Hazara Lord Seismic Zone, and on the surface, we are having active Riasi Thrust. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a question from uh, Andrew Meech. Please open your uh, mic and ask your question. Uh, hello, Mona Lisa. Thank you very much for such a wide ranging and comprehensive uh, discussion. I really appreciated it. Could you uh, just explain to me the, what the numbers are in the focal mechanisms that you show? Are those are those the depth of the event? Uh, yeah, yeah. And little numbers in all the beach balls. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, actually, the numbers they are actually uh, uh, showing uh, 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 the total number of fault plane solutions, total number of earthquakes. Uh, for which fault based solution data was available. So one thing is that the number they are uh, uh, only indicating the total number of uh, the earthquakes which are incorporated for the formulation of fault based solution. And uh, the second thing is that uh, these fault based solutions, uh, the arrows uh, <laughs> and numbers, they are showing the location of those fault based solutions on those specific uh, 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 on those specific fault map uh, that where they were actually occurred and uh, uh, those earthquakes whose fault based solutions were carried out uh, they are actually showing uh, their location those arrows and the yeah. numbers they are showing the total number of uh, earthquakes which are incorporated for fault based solutions I see. What what are the kind? Of, what are the sort of typical depth ranges of some of those earthquakes? Like, for example, in the area around Islamabad and and farther to the north. Yeah, Andrew, very interesting uh, question. Uh, thanks uh, for indicating this because uh, I have not uh, mentioned it in any any of my slide. Uh, so by your question, by answering your question, I must say that. 
uh, your question is very informative. Uh, the depth of these earthquakes uh, whose fault print solutions have been carried out is very shallow, especially near Islamabad. As I said that uh, they are all uh, which are occurring near Islamabad and Tarbela, they are occurring at the depth of 10 kilometer, 8 to 10 kilometers. Mm. So Hazara lower seismic zone is also lying at the same depth as indicated by Sieber and Abaster in their research. So uh, our work, um, I have discussed this work with uh, Bob when, when we have uh, uh, interaction, uh, Bob Yeats, uh, 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 when we uh, having interaction with Bob Yeats and we were planning to publish uh, our fault plane solution data, uh, I, Kasim Jansab and Bob Yeats, uh, uh, by correlating fault plane solution data uh, with the geological field studies. So uh, in uh, during that uh, uh, discussion through emails, uh, we uh, concluded that uh, Hazara Lord seismic zone is actually can be the causative source of uh, earthquake uh, in Islamabad, not the yeah. surface faults. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, the next question is from Professor Qasim Jan. Sir, please ask your question. Thank you. This is uh, this is not a, a question specific. First of all, I would like to compliment Dr. Mona Lisa for a very nice presentation and full of new information. This is good, precise, and we owe it to her. Uh, my my question is not. Pardon me. Yeah. My question is not specifically addressed to the speaker, but it's a general question, and that is, Pakistanis in uh, have been. Um, made to believe that Kalabar Dam would solve a lot of our problems as far as irrigation and water storage is concerned. And some people very seriously in the government community, some very senior engineers, for example, they believe that we should construct the Kalabar Dam as soon as we can. My, uh, I have some technical fears. There is political controversy on the Kalabar Dam between various provinces, particularly between Sindh and Punjab, which I am not addressing. But my question specifically is that if we have active tectonics going on in Kalabar, and there is also a, a fairly thick layer of salt which extends for tens of kilometers to the north and perhaps also to the south. So would it be a, a, uh, a safe site for construction of a big dam? Wouldn't there be a, a danger of uh, salt tectonics, salt diapirism ultimately disrupting the, uh, the structure of the dam? Thank you. Well, I, I think, uh, Kasim, just to answer in general, uh, the challenges of, of constructing large dams in Pakistan uh, generally is, is, is a subject of, of risk because, for example, both Tarbella and Mangla are in areas of, of seismic hazard of one type or another. And I think that, the as you mentioned, Kalabag, of course, the Kalabag fault zone is nearby uh, the distribution of evaporites is not precisely known, I think, in the subsurface, and it would it would be possible that there would be uh, some salt remobilization or dissolution uh, once you put a large reservoir in that area. And I think these are these are engineering questions that require, you know, detailed studies, and at some level, the nation will have to balance the risks of uh, developing water storage in zones that are challenging. And, and as you look at the lifespan of the Tarbella Dam in particular, uh, which is, as you know, uh, I'm not sure what the total lifespan is, but it'll be, it's filling up with sediment slowly, slowly. And uh, I think that there is a tremendous need for water storage and for both for irrigation and for hydroelectric purposes. And I think that it may be that there will be, it'll be necessary to take some risks uh, in terms of providing the resources to the nation.
Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Bob. And, and so I think with this, uh, we, we've had a, a wonderful uh, morning on, on your side and an evening on our side. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mona, Lisa, for your presentation. And it, it complements nicely the, the work that Andrew uh, Miggs presented earlier and, and other studies. And I think that the, uh, the interface between the earth sciences, geology and, and engineering and, and the public need, uh, we've just sort of underlined that a little bit here right at the end. But I think that that this is one of the great challenges that, that we face worldwide. I mean, there's a there's worldwide water challenges uh, on in every country, and I think that uh, as we go forward, we need additional data. And the work that you're doing, Mona Lisa, with your colleagues at the Kadiazm University, is a, is a wonderful uh, contribution to understanding. And I, I'm I'm you know we'll have to hope that the scientific data can be incorporated into uh, public policy planning as we go forward. I, I'd like yeah. to, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, your participation, and uh, I look forward to seeing you next week uh, when we have the talk by uh, Turi Serling from the University of Utah. Yeah, Bob, I must say um, I'm very grateful to you for providing me this venue to present my work, and I'm I'm really uh, very happy uh, because uh, uh, not only a presentation is a big honor for me, but also uh, meeting uh, with Andrew and you and uh, Kasim Jansab, although he's in Islamabad, but we uh, we don't have a frequent meeting. Uh, we only uh, work on email uh, due to this COVID. Uh, but I must say that I'm, I'm really very grateful to all of you by uh, listening to me and uh, by uh, allowing me to present my work. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your, you. your hard work. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Yep. Thank you all. Goodbye. Yep. Good morning. Bye bye. Uh, recording one. Okay.